Hello, everyone, and welcome to the evening edition of Conspiracy Grotesco, the conspiracy against the human race, and Teatro Grotesco. Um, we have a little bit to talk about. Um, today we're doing blundering analogies, uh, life principles, and, um, uh-oh, uh-oh, where is it? Oh, I could just look at my notes. Undoing part three. Um, so let me read to you. <clears throat> oh, no, 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 no. This opening bit from Blundering. Consciousness is an existential liability, as every pessimist agrees. A blunder of blind nature. According to Zaffa, that has taken humankind down a black hole of logic. To make it through this life, we must make believe that we are not what we are contradictory beings whose continuous only worsens our plight as mutants who embody the contorted logic of a paradox. To correct this blunder, we should desist from procreating. We could be what could be more judicious or more urgent, existentially speaking, than our self-administered oblivion. At the very least, we might give some regard to this theory of the blunder as a thought experiment. And it goes on and on and on. Um, so, in more and more thinking of this, um, consciousness being an existential liability, and the only way to solve this, um, so far, isn't necessarily each man's suicide, but, um, the idea, the notion that if we can stop the continuance of our existence by not procreating, um, that we would, um, be doing mankind or the world itself a favor. And, um, <clears throat> I think this time reading through it, the thing that has kind of, I don't want to say been haunting me, but I don't know another way of putting it. The idea that... Um, pessimism being hereditary, um, like we talked about last time. But, um, the, I guess, paradox of that is that in at least this version of pessimism, um, the whole idea is to not bear children. So, passing on a um, sickness or a thought gene that um, the world would be better off without us and we as humans would be better off not existing, just... Um, it's been, like, swirling in my mind like water in a toilet bowl. Um, it's just uh, kind of a... One of those, like, wow, existential crisis moments. And then um, another thing that goes on here, <clears throat> this is really um, kind of the beginning of the book where talking about 
supernatural horror and literature starts to come to the forefront. And um, H.P. Lovecraft comes up twice in um, the sections for today. And in the, the first time he's mentioned, it's brought up like um, that other in at the mountains of madness it's um brought up that these um great old ones came here and created mankind as kind of a joke um and there's been a lot of other um theories on that and i wish i had more information on that like um cuz i i remember so many stories where like Mankind was a joke or an accident or something that backfired. Um, basically through all of these um, different stories and movies that I'm thinking of. Um, we weren't supposed to be, but happened anyway. Um, and I've never thought about the people who create those things. If you guys could think of any, please leave them down below. Um, that those people, that might be their worldview and that might be their um, life view. Um, so that was kind of interesting. And then um, <clears throat> in analogies, um, there is talk about um, Schopenhauer, which is going to come up a lot more. Which is good because I have, um, like, like Schopenhauer's um, big thing, like his big contribution to pessimistic philosophy, is the um, the will, and it's not like like man's free will. It's like that there is a force in the universe that pushes us to survive and also want things, and want to have different things, and we can't fight that, so we might as well just let it happen, and I don't know how I feel about that, um, it's probably the one thing in, I'm sure there's more, but this is like my big, um, kind of belief with Schopenhauer. I just, I don't know if I agree with that. If I, um, if you are a proponent of Schopenhauer's theory of will, um, talk to me down below. I would love to have a conversation about it just to maybe have me understand it more. I just, it's the, it's just the thing I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. I can't sink my sink my teeth into it. It just doesn't feel correct. To me, it seems like... And this might be me being a dick right here, and I might eat my words later. But... Because it seems like Schopenhauer um, kind of had... Um, I don't want to say things handed to him, but um, he, he was doing all right, you know? And I think the whole bit of the will came into it because he had to come up with a reason or an excuse as to why he was all right. Like, he was all right if um, his whole belief on life was that existence was not all right, if that makes any sense. So, um... That's kind of um, my bits on that. And hopefully, um, in going through this with such a fine tooth comb, um, I'll be able to have a clearer um, thought about that. But I don't know if I will, um, unless I go through um, the will and what's it called? The will and rep. Uh, I can't remember. Is it in here? Did they talk about it? Oh, look at me. I'm just all over the place now. Oh, 
the the world as will and representation. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've read studies and pessimism, and uh, yeah, but the the world as will and representation is like his his opus. So maybe I should look into that. Um, but then we get into um, him using analogies. And we're, um, there's a big section from a great story called The Willows by Algernon Blackwood. And um, it's kind of a thing where um, nature itself um, is just like, you know, we're going to start killing people. And um, it reminds me very much of a movie that was kind of awful. Um, called The Happening by M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong. Um, and, um, it's just when you are so insignificant that nature and the world will do whatever the fuck it wants, and if you're in its way, that's your own damn fault. But, um, it really... Give, it makes you feel like like an ant, like a scout ant in a nightclub. Like you're just looking for food, and then you realize you're in a nightclub, and there's all these people dancing and running around, giant people who are going to step on you, and who have no thought that you're even there. And um, it kind of gives that feeling. Um and then it goes through, like, a bunch of other stuff, like, um, the ghost stories of M.R. James, uh, the Great God Pan, uh, the Yellow Sign from Robert Chambers, um, just stuff like that. And then when we get into life principles, um, we're going deep into Lovecraft territory now. Or wait, we're going deep into Lovecraft country now. There you go. Um... And Lovecraft had very hard views on things. Um, and he was like a cosmic pessimist, meaning that we are completely insignificant and we don't matter at all. And um, there's so many things out there that we just don't understand and we'll never will understand. And um, if we ever did even glimpse of what is really out there, it would drive us to madness. Um, and that's kind of how Lovecraft was the majority of his life. And then towards the end of his life, he says he became an indifferentist, where he just was indifferent about any, everything. He threw his cynicism away. He threw his pessimism away. He's just like, you know what? The universe is there. I don't give a shit. It's going to do what it does. It has nothing um, personal against me. It's just doing its thing, and I'm just here. And um, that doesn't sound like an awful way to be, but at the same time... Um, no, it just doesn't sound like an awful way to be at all. Um, then it has this big chunk of a letter he wrote to Edwin Baird, who was the um, first editor of Weird Tales magazine. Um, I'm not going to read it, but one of the things that it brings... There's a lot of great points in this, but one of the things that it brings up is that... Um, he was saying, like, he was talking to this guy, and the guy's like, oh, I got this story idea. Um, it's going to be a, about a mad scientist who, like, wants to take over the world. So he, like, trains um, these germs to be armies and spread over the world, like, the plague and all this other stuff. And Lovecraft's like, that's fine, but I don't understand why anyone would want to rule the world. Like, how come he can't just have, like, a morbid hatred for mankind and want to destroy everybody? To me, that makes way more sense or whatever. 
So it's just, uh, <clears throat> it's an interesting thought because you always like, if you think about it, like if you were a mad scientist and you created a disease to like wipe out mankind so you could take over the world, what would you be taking over? Um, whereas if you like had a hatred of mankind and um, were extremely pessimistic, you could do the same thing and then um, have yourself be killed too and everything's fine. Like, if you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but like, why... It would be like the end of that Twilight Zone episode where um, the world blows up and the guy was in the bank vault and when he comes out, he could finally read all the books he wants but then he breaks his glasses. It would be like, what would be the point of ruling a world that had no subjects? Or what's a king without subjects? I think is the same. Um, ah, yes, and then... In the last bit here, I don't like how this line is written. It's written very clunky, clunkily, I think. But um, Ligotti starts talking about a South African philosopher um, named David Benatar. And he wrote a book called Better Never to Have Been Born. Or, I'm sorry, Better to Never Have Been the harm of coming into existence in 2006. And um, I'm going to paraphrase this because the way it's written, I really have a problem with. Um, Some amount of suffering is inevitable for all who are born. While the absence of happiness does not deprive those who would have been born but were not. The scales are tipped in favor of not bearing children. But people who want to have kids are doing harm because they are bringing people into the world who are going to suffer. And that's like a real um, heavy pill. And I don't think it has anything to do with this. But, um, like, today was my kid's last day of school. And um, I took my kid to school. I picked my kid up from school. And it was like, wow, this is the last time I'm going to do this. And it made me think back to all of the other times I've done that thing. And um, I just got a little um, emotional, I guess. But the thing about it is, is that the thought of my kid suffering, like, brings me to tears. Like, it hurts me to think of my kid hurting. And I'm sure most parents feel this way about their children. Um, but it's just like, um... I don't know. It just makes me think about like, like I wouldn't give my kid up for anything. Okay. Let me just make that clear right now. But, um, if we're talking what ifs and theories and all this other stuff, it's like, if I didn't have my child, um, my child wouldn't suffer. And I wouldn't suffer because I wouldn't be worrying about my child suffering. So it's like having my child um, has brought me loads of pain. And um, that's a thing. It's real, you know. But at the same time, like I feel fucking love my kids so much and like the good times definitely definitely outweigh me worrying and me um being like upset and suffering because of it so it's just um this is another one of those things that like as a parent it's hard to get behind um 
talking about um, people not having children. Because when I take myself out of the equation and I'm looking at everybody else, um, I'm like, yeah, don't have kids. What the fuck, dude? Kids are gross. Kids are dirty. They pick their nose. They eat their boogers. They're gross. Um, but as a parent, um, it's just, it's difficult. And it, Again, when reading this book, you don't have to agree with everything in it, and you don't have to take on um, the things in this book. Um, it's just a good thought piece, especially while reading Teatro Grotesco. Oh, so speaking of, um, tomorrow's story is... Uh, oh... My Case for Retributive, retributive Action. It's a good one. Um, we're in the third section called um, Deformations now. Um, God, this is such a good book. Like, you just look at the stories that are in it, and they're all good. Um, this is a really good book. I'm so glad we're all reading it. Um, but yeah, so um, Conspiracy Against the Human Race. Um, I hope this was interesting, slightly. Um, sorry about the late night filming and late night upload. Um, it was my kid's last day of school, and tomorrow's my kid's graduation. So um, there's all sorts of stuff going on. So um, yeah, any comments down below, and I will see you guys later.